we start off with Bryce Harper. So Brody Van Wagenen said, come and get us. And the Phillies said, hold my beer. <laughs> so the Phillies signed Bryce Harper, 13 years, $330 million, no opt-out clause. That will take Harper through the age 39 season without an opt-out. And the thing that's stunning about this deal is the average annual value. Now, he breaks the record for the most guaranteed money, breaking the record that was held by... Uh, Giancarlo Stanton, which was a 13-year, $325 million deal. And right now, Harper, essentially, will make a smidge over $25 million a year. Which, in this market, in this day and age, happens to be great. Now, what is what kind of player is he going to be at the age of 37, 38, 39? I think that what the Phillies are thinking, yeah, if this is a 10-year deal, we can look at it as $33 million a year. But it's a 13-year deal, so when you're dealing with luxury tax, tax threshold, you know what this is, Don? $25 yeah. million a year. That's why the long-term contract helps the Phillies because it amortizes the cost of the deal. $25 million gives them $8 million more to play with rather than giving $33 million for 10 years. So you know just by looking at the deal, and Scott Boris telegraphs his fastballs, when A-Rod signed 252 in Texas, the reason it was 252 was because the previous highest mark ever for a professional athlete was 126 by Kevin Garnett. He wanted to double that. And you know he went into this thinking, I've got to beat the Stanton contract. And he did by $5 million. But let's be honest, Stanton signed his contract four years ago. So the value of that contract went up just $5 million in four years. I think the Phillies made a great deal. Now, the question, though, Don and Peter, does Harper really want to be in Philadelphia? Or did Boris exhaust every single option and couldn't get the Dodgers to bite on a long-term deal and couldn't get the Giants to bite on a long-term deal? Obviously, the Yankees were never in play. The Cubs were never in play. So Harper goes from Washington to Philly, and that construction worker who shouted out at him a couple of months ago, just take the money, baby. He yeah. took the money and ran $330 million. And now the National League East, in my opinion, the three best teams, the Phillies, the Nationals, and the Braves, and the Mets are a smidge behind. Yeah, right. I mean, how, how can you tell me otherwise? I mean, Philadelphia was a good team last year that kind of faded down the stretch. But now they go out and get one of the best players in baseball in a ballpark where he can easily hit 50 home runs, Michael. I mean, that ballpark uh, does not does not a pitcher-friendly ballpark by any stretch of the imagination. So he can launch home runs there, help them offensively. Even though Washington lost him, they're still a good team. Yeah, they've got Soto with the, with for the, the whole year. With the moves yeah. that they made. Yeah, he's 19, going to be 20 now. So he's going to be better and, and become maybe the next superstar for that team. And the Atlanta Braves... They went out and got Donaldson. They're the defending champions. So, yeah. And, and you know what? The, you, whatever the structure is. And the Nationals the history also of Major Corbin. Right. Right. So the history of Major League Baseball, Michael, whatever scenario you were ever talking about about making the playoffs, it's impossible to make the playoffs as a fourth place team in your division. Can't do it in, because the teams above you are going to be wild card teams and you're going to be outside looking in. So if there are three teams better than you in the National League East, that means you're not going to the playoffs. Wait, hold on. we got to check in with our Phillies desk real quick and see what the celebration's like. <laughs> Andrew? Andrew, you are over there? This is amazing. This is Look great. how happy he is. Well, <laughs> do you know that right before we went on at 255, Don, I got a text from Andrew. All capital letters, Phillies, exclamation points. He is giddy well, right now. I, I was walking past him as he saw the news. And he he flung himself back and almost ran into me. Like, I, I saw that moment. There's a word I can use to really articulate what I saw, but I got to stay on brand. But it was that level, Michael. I know the I word. I was standing word, next to him when it happened. Jut. <laughs> oh my god. Nobody has any well, idea what this. that means. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we do. You stole it's my word. <laughs> but I wasn't even going to go there. But I think anybody that knows me knows what that means. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's plenty. Hey, listen, um, you well, know, there's plenty of a little. <laughs> well, I, 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 there's so many places I want to go. I'm just not going to take it. He was, chance, he was visibly you know excited. Let's put it that way. He, yes, he was. There was. Um, 
There was a lot going on there, but I walked by. I mean, so, and I was happy because we live in a world now, Michael, where it's about the business in and the world. less of a fan. I mean, that's a guy that had genuine excitement for his team landing one of the best players in baseball. I, I, so. And you know what? It's the type of signing that changes the balance of power. It really does because, you know, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, Van Wagenen said, come and get us. I mean, I don't know if that was just... Uh, a, uh, you know, GM speaks uh, to excite his fan base, but I think they've got to do a little bit more. Now, you know, they're going to start the year without a third baseman, essentially. And, you know, the, the now Met fans, I'm sure, are going to come down and go, why didn't we sign this guy? Because it does change the balance of power. If you had looked at this and said, all right, Harper goes and signs with the Giants or the Dodgers, you can make the case the Mets could be better than the Phillies. But I'm sorry, with Bryce Harper... The Phillies are better. The Phillies made other moves yeah. as well. Segura is a big pickup for them. These are good moves. And and Rayo Muto. And listen, what we have to understand is we can only analyze the information that we're given, okay? But what's starting to come down now is that Harper didn't have a problem with Philadelphia. I think he just knew that he could get what he wanted from Philadelphia and to keep the narrative of him not wanting to go there was going to drive the price up because Ken Rosenthal just tweeted, source, no opt-outs. Harper didn't want one. Mm. So if you're led to believe that report, what that tells you is he had never had a problem with Philadelphia. He had never had a problem being booed in Washington nine times during the course of the season when they played there. He and Boris knew that when push come to shove, that money was going to come from Philadelphia. And the more he tried to shop at other places, they probably knew, going back to the organization in Philadelphia saying they were prepared to pay stupid money, that that probably drove the price up. So I don't think he ever had a problem but, going but to But I will tell you he, this, he I, I don't think this is a great deal for him. I mean, this was the seminal expected free agent this year, he and Machado. Machado, whichever way you cut it, gets $5 million more a year than Harper. So it's like, remember when Magic Johnson, and this is when money was different, he signed a 25-year, $25, $25 million contract with the Lakers. That was quickly renegotiated like four years in. That was a million dollars a year. So you give him all the years he wants because all you care about is average annual value. Bryce Harper's going to make $25 million a year. There's a lot of people that make more. A lot. Yeah, but, And that was not the intent get, of Boris when he started this. <sighs> The, that's fine, Michael, but the 13 years is almost unprecedented in this day and age. Well, We're Stan, talking about A-Rod being... Stan got it four years ago. Yeah, it's, 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 but, it's, but right now, we were talking 10-year deals and going, like, how outrageous is that? It's a 13-year deal. So, yeah, average annual salary is less than Machado, but he gets to continue to make it, you know, three years beyond when Machado's contract expires. So he, he still gets three more, and if he decides to play, depending on what's going to be happening you know, down the road when things may change, the fact is he's going to make that 25-plus three more years longer. So that still means something, right? Yeah, but what's $25 I mean, yeah, he million might have lost the annual in, in 10 years? What, what, what's it going to be worth in, in, in those days' dollars? I'm sure it's still going to be a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, but it's not, it's not going to be what, like money that, that you can't even believe. I mean, by that but, time, but, but, in 13 but, but, but look years, John, I would say there will be Major League Baseball players making 55 to $60 million a year. Maybe, but but you know what? Not a 36, 37-year-old. So when Machado's deal is up at 10 years, right, when his, when his deal with San Diego, whoever ends up picking up that contract, right. when that's over, he's going to be how old? He'll be, 20, he'll be 26. All right, so he'll be 36 years old. He is not going to have the ability to make $30 million a year at that age, right? And the same well, thing you with Harper. When, what if he has a great year at the age of 36, and, and then average annual salaries are over 40 million? He might be able to sign a one or two year deal. Uh, yeah, but you're looking at it that way, Michael. We're also looking at you know a CBA is going to come. What if they institute a salary cap? What, there's a lot of things that can happen to where maybe this money isn't going to be Listen, paid. I, I, and he's and he's just betting the fact that here I am going to be 37, 38, 39 years old, guaranteeing myself 25 plus million dollars when Machado is going to have to go around trying to get. Some some kind of stupid money at the age of 36 when his contract expires and maybe not be able to make I don't the want same to diminish, as Peter said, $330 million. It's an incredible haul uh, for playing baseball. I get it. But this is not the dream that Boris had. The dream Boris had was a $40 million a year contract. He fell $15 million short. It's sad. 
sad. That's all I can say. I, I borderline feel bad right. for Harper. But at the end of the day, Michael, Boris can lick his wounds. Harper can lick his wounds. Uh, what wounds there could be regrets. But the fact is, for 2019 and the foreseeable future, the Philadelphia Phillies went out and added themselves one heck of a player that the Mets are going to have to contend with now for the next if, decade if plus. If there is, uh, you know, winner or losers in this... And it's hard to be a loser with $330 million guaranteed money. The Phillies won sure. this. The Phillies won this because Middleton said, I'm going to spend stupid money. This is not stupid money. $25 million a year is not stupid money. It's just not. And when can they, and when could they get out of it? Can't. It's, it's guaranteed. guaranteed. No matter no what. No matter what. He could, God forbid, break his I leg believe tomorrow. no opt-out. No opt-out. I would like to say that even at that price, this is still not a good deal for the Phillies. Why? Because you, I mean, Harper's been really good. You're telling me there's no chance that fast forward six years, you're like, I cannot believe we're paying this guy $25 million a year. He kind of turned into a bum. The, the last he gets a little injured, but I, I, he, I, the I, end of his career, he's not good. And you're paying him $25 but, million. 13 years. There's but, almost no chance he can be good but like this contract. Here's why this whole thing is ridiculous, okay? Take a look at how long the average general manager stays the GM and how long an owner might actually own the team. I mean, if the, if, the, if the Phillies win a couple of championships over the next five years, they may not care how the contract ends. The idea is, how do you lock the player up for the next few years so we can win a bunch of championships? I think a lot of people know. Like, wh how are you sitting there analyzing, well, you know, when he turns 36, 37, man, this is, is going to look ugly. Heck, everybody who made the decision might be gone by right. then. But if they win between now and then, they're going to be they're going to be heroes in a town like Philadelphia, where the team has literally won just twice in the last hundred years or whatever, or three times in the last you. hundred years. That they win a bunch of championships with the guy who's going to who's going to moan and groan about it ten years if from now happens, when he's a limited player. If that happens, sure. But what if they don't? And it feels hey, then it's going to look bad, right? And it feels like Bobby Bonilla before you know if it. If you think about it, though, you know you're talking about stupid money, right? Signing Andrew McCutcheon three years, $50 million, when there's no way he was valued at that. I mean, the Yankees loved Andrew McCutcheon, wanted to keep him, not at that money. So he's making $17 million a year. Bryce Harper's making $8 million more a year than Andrew McCutcheon, who's 32 years old. Again, I, I understand what Peter's saying. You're, you're risking whether or not this guy becomes a good player. I think this guy has a drive for greatness. He wants to be an all-time great. So I don't think he's just going to go in the toilet after three years. I think he. I think the Phillies look at this. If we can get ten great years out of him, the other three years, that's that's gravy. We'll we'll give him twenty five million dollars a year for a gold yeah. watch. Whatever whatever gets it done, and even if it's you know a, a really good seven years, you know whatever gets the deal done to bring him here and win, and and and, and establish yourself as a, as an all time franchise during that period of time, then you're you're probably going to live with it. And, and again, Philadelphia may find themselves in a situation where they could get themselves out of the deal. You know, the way that Texas was able to get themselves out of the deal, the way Seattle was able to get out of the deal with Cano. So there is an exit strategy that could still be applied at some point. And it'll be easier to do if this team wins three championships in the next six years because now, of this. Now, Mark Feinstein is reporting a full no-trade clause in the deal with the Phillies. So they can't trade him anywhere unless he says, okay. So there could not have been a problem with Philadelphia then, uh, right? I mean, I mean, we'll never so know. How can you, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll never know, but it's completely locked in. No opt-out. You know, it's, he, he must really want to be there then.